Okay, so we were kind of rushed at the end of class last time and we were going over this code walkthrough. So what I want to do today is take a few more minutes and do a little bit slower, visit some issues that uh, we didn't have time to do at the end of class last time. And then our main task is to learn how to program the Bernstein and the Knuth hash functions. And that's going to involve uh, some more information representation, some bitwise binary operators. That's our goal for today. So now, uh, as we explained last time, we, uh, one of the things that we're doing here is we are using functional programming techniques. Um, and these new functional programming features that are new to C++ 11. Okay, and so as we talked about last time, this is the code for the hash functions. And what we're saying is that, the, what we said is that that second line where we have type diff, that's defining a function type. And how is a function defined? It is defined by its signature. Do you remember what the signature of a function is? Yes, exactly. It's the names and the types of the parameters. And if there's a, a value returned, then it's, you have to say what the type of the value returned is. So that's what this line is doing. It's saying that a hash function, so the name is on the right, capital H hash function, that's the name, and it's saying that a function that returns, what does, this, what does a hash function have to return? A what? What, is, what type does it have to return? Yeah, um, it's uh, almost an int, but it's what kind of an int? Unsigned. It's an unsigned int. So uh, unsigned means, uh, means non-negative. Right, so the smallest unsigned int is a zero, and then the largest one is uh, whatever. It depends on the size of the integer. Does everybody see? So, un because look, you, we don't ha we the reason why, why do we use unsigned ints? Because these are the subscripts of an array, and our arrays start at zero, sub zero. You don't have an array sub negative three. Are you with me on that? So that's why we we use unsigned int, and then. Um, so that's defining the function type. Oh, and by the way, and what does the parameter have to be? It has to be a what? A CA metric string, okay, and called by what? Constant reference. So that's what a, and so here, uh, our Bernstein hash is a hash function because it returns an unsigned int and it has a CA metric string which is called by constant reference and what's the name of the parameter? What's the name of the parameter? X. X. And so this X is going to be CA matrix. Now look, what's the first line in the, in the Bernstein hash function right after the inline unsigned int? What is that statement? String str gets what? X dot 2T. Dot now what is that X dot 2T? That is a function, that is a method of CA matrix that returns the data part of it. Are you with me? So that's, what, that's where that comes from. If you go back and look at the CA metrics, that's a method that returns that. So this is how we get a hold of our string, str. Are you with me on that? Okay, so that part's given. And what I suggested yesterday, and it's still not a bad idea to do this, uh, if you want to get your program compiled in stages, you throw out the CERR and the throw negative one and you just put return like some number like 5783 or something like that, you know. And just have it always return the same value and that way it will compile and you can test the other part of your program. You can get it to compile and run. Although if you do that, of course, every, it will always return the same thing regardless of the string and so you'll always get a collision. But still, our table can handle collisions and so you can debug your program that way without having to have everything right right off the bat. Okay, so, and now we said here we looked at the uh, main program and we said that uh, we have a local variable called hash function, lowercase h, and its type is cap hash function capital H. So that is a variable and it has type function. So this is all, this is functional programming. A, a variable can have type function. And then we said on this line, what happens is the main program prompts the user for uh, what kind of function, whether he gives them the option of Knuth or, or Bernstein. And um, 
So in this statement, hash function gets Knuth hash. Right? So that's assigning a, a value to a variable, just like you, say, you can say i gets 6, you can say hash function gets Knuth hash. Same way a variable can get a value, that's kind of like the variable and it's, it's a function. We're going to do this again actually in a later project. So this is good that we're visiting this right off the bat here. And then down here, what, we, what we're doing is, here's where we're actually setting it, the main, the, where the main program is setting up the hash table. And so the hash table is a little local variable, and it's lowercase hash table, lowercase h hash table is the table, and its type is capital H hash table, and we're calling the constructor here. Okay, the constructor has two parameters, a table size, and, and we're passing it the hash function as a parameter to the table constructor. And then here on this next slide is the hash table itself. And look at the attributes. What is one of the attributes? It's underscore hash function. That's a function. It's, that's here, that's initialized down here by the, con the constructor initializes it. Are you with me? And then the other attribute is what? An array of what? Linked lists. So that's our list L project. Okay, so the hash, tub, the hash table is an array of lists. And what's the name of the hash table? Underscore HT. Right? Now because this is an array T, because this is an array T, how are we going to get to the capacity of the hash table? How are we going to access the capacity of the hash table? Yeah, array T has a method called cap. Yeah, that returns the capacity. So that's how we will access it. We will access it. If you go back and review the specification of the array T. So that's how you get the capacity of the hash table. Is everybody clear? And what do we have access to? Underscore HT. That's our attribute. Are you with me, sports fans? With this. And now, here is the code that we, um, that we will do. The two primary um, methods are insert and contains. And like I said, for simplicity, we're not going to do remove. Okay? But um, what is the post condition of insert? Installs x in the hash table at the what? At the beginning of the appropriate chain. Okay? So what will you, but it's a list. It's a list L, and what, so how do you put something at the beginning of a list? No, 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 it's not a root, root, root is with a tree. Prepend. Pre Just call prepend. Are you with me? And by the way, here's another thing. I, this is not too realistic. Um, we're not going to bother to, notice that the precondition here is not a true it's not a true uh, dictionary setup. We're not going to test to see if the element is in the list. And okay, so we're not, we're not going to check for duplicates. Okay, so that's just because we're not, you know, we're just doing this uh, very simple one just to see how hashing works. Okay, but if we were in a real dictionary, you'd have to check to make sure that there's no, dupl no, no duplicate keys, you, you store the key value pair, but let's just dispense with that, okay, just for, just to make things easy. Because we know that our test program is not going to do duplicates anyway, and we're just setting this up so that we can take some statistics. All right, is everybody clear on that? But that is a deficiency, but it's just for simplicity. So what I got to do is call prepend. But, I mean, you have to do it with the hashing. You know, you've got to hash the string value, right? So you got to call the, f well, anyway. Very short. Very short, but, you know, very, very conceptual. Right? And same thing, and what about contains? What do we have, what do we have in list L for, to do contains? How are we going to do that? Doesn't list L have a contains? Oh, well, there you have it. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's the chain in the hash table. 
So how do you get the chain in the hash table? Well, yeah. Well, you have to like go through each of the array. So no, it contains, it contains, well, does that for you. That's already done. You, you don't have to loop through all those. Contains list, we are reusing list L. But aren't there multiple lists though in each of the array segments? Well, yeah, so you have to go to, the, but you, you, oh. you hash it to, the where, to where it goes and then the contains of that list. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you have to hash it. Your code has to, ha has to hash it to the right one of those. Okay. But there's a separate list for each one. You, you do the contains of that one list. Oh yeah, that was a good concept question. Are we good? Does everybody see how that works? Okay. And now here's one more that I failed to mention last time. In fact, I'm not sure we even showed this slide last time. But you are responsible for doing two stream. Now, do you remember how the how it um, how the table came out when we when we wanted to dump the hash table? It came out like this, something like this. It came out like maybe say say five colon and then blah 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 a list and then maybe if the next one was like 10 colon blah 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 here and maybe 11 colon blah 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 and first what came out in the in the hash table dump first of all what did the, did the hash table dump include do you remember we did one with a thousand and it didn't print out a whole thousand of them what did it just print out just the ones that were not empty. So you're going to have to do that. You, the, your code has to do that. And what does your code have to print? It prints what? Your code will print what? The index, the index of every non-entry one and then a colon, but then what will this be? This will be a li but our list has a what? It has a two string. You don't have to reprogram that. We're reusing. Code reuse. Right? List L, list L can do this. You just call it. I think I, is, I, I, we might have even we might have even re implemented the streaming operator. Did we do less than less than? If we did, you can stream it. Instead of calling to stream, you might just be able to stream it. I don't remember. You see here we're doing the streaming. We're we're, we're overloading the oper the streaming operator for. Um, for a table, for a hash table. Yeah? The statement like overloading um, the stream operator always like gets me. Is it just, are we just making it so we can take any type? Of yes. Okay. Yes. That's what, oh, yeah. That's, in fact, we're going to see in, the, in a few minutes, we're going to see another example of, of overloading, actually. Yeah, question? So we talked about how we would have like something that would like hold the place if like it wasn't, if it was empty, like there was nothing in the hash table. Like editing, editing. Oh, that was, yeah, I, I remember that. That was here. That was this algorithm. We said, here, in the direct addressing one, we said, uh, if table.key equals, and in this case, we would have to have a special empty pair. Okay, our special empty, our special value is the empty list. Because when we set up the array, the, the array is set up as an array of lists. And so that array is set up as, the constructor sets that up as an array of empty lists. So what you can do, that special value is the, is the empty list. Okay. Yeah, good, good question. All right. Now, we're going to have to do some more information representation stuff. And this time we're going to have to do some, more, some operations. And this kind of stuff is just very basic. Uh, experienced programmers know how, what goes on under the hood. They know about binary, so this is a good, good application, a good motivation for learning this binary stuff. First of all, what we're going to have to do is to implement these hash functions is there are five C++ bit operators that we're going to have to use. All right? And the first one is called shift left. And what's the symbol for shift left? Less than, less than. But wait a minute. I thought less than, less than was what? I thought, I thought that's how we did C out. Right? If we do C out, boom, 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 boom. Isn't, isn't this go with C out? What's the deal? Well, guess what, you guys? This one came first in C. 
And then in C++ what they did is they overloaded that operator to do this. And what happens is this operator, if you have an integer on the left, then it's a shift. But if you have a C out, if you have a stream on the left, then it's stream. So this is function overloading depending on the type. Now is everybody clear on that? Are you with me? So in the original C language, this, 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 uh, these two less thans next to each other is the shift operator and it was applied to integers. And so when C++ came along they said, oh well we need something to, for streaming. They just overloaded the streaming operator and they said, well if you have a stream on the left instead of an integer, then this means stream. So they overloaded it based on the type. Now is everybody clear on that? You see what, what's going on there? Pretty slick, huh? And actually this is the older one. This is the newer one. <laughs> Okay, so we have a shift left, and then the other, the second one is shift right. We'll see what these mean in a minute. And now we have bitwise and, and now you know how you, whenever you do if is empty and whatever, what, do you, how, what, do you, what symbol do you use for that and? Ampersand, ampersand. Okay, well a single ampersand means bitwise and. There's a difference between a single ampersand and a double ampersand. So single ampersand is bitwise. And similarly, when you do or, what do you normally do? Stick, stick. Yeah, otherwise. But single stick is bitwise or. And then bitwise, now here's a new operation that you might not be familiar with. This XOR, does anybody know how to pronounce that? Exclusive or. This is the exclusive or. So, and that's the little caret. So we have to learn how, how each one of these works. Okay, so first, let's start with the AND and the OR and the exclusive OR. So here in part B of the figure on this next slide, we have now, you guys um, have all had formal methods, right? And you know that what are the constants in a Boolean expression? Exactly. True, false. So you guys, what does true correspond to in binary in, as a bit? True is what? One. And false is what? Zero. So that's our numero uno point to make. Right? And what do you know about, what do you know about P and Q? When is P and Q true? Here, you know. Yeah, when is P and Q true? They, they both have to be what? They both have to be true. So do you see here that if you do a bitwise and, that if you and zero and zero, you get zero. If you and, that's like saying false and false is false. And if you do zero and one, or sorry, if you do false and true, you get false. And if you do true and false, you get false. But if you get true and true, you get true. So everybody see how that's just lined in the columns? Are you with me? So everybody see how that corresponds to a truth table? But what happens, this is how the bits, when you do a bitwise and, that's how that works. Now is everybody clear on that? Okay, so, yeah. Now you guys, the next one is OR. What do you know about P or Q? Do not P or Q. When is P or Q? When what? One or the other or both. So do you see that this next one is if you do false or false, what do you get? False. This happens you no know, bitwise, you know, at each position. False or false. And then if you do false or true, what do you get? True. True or false, you get true. False, uh, true or true, you get true. Are you with me? Now, you know what we did in, in uh, formal methods? P is not equivalent to Q. What, does, what, what was our truth table for P is not equivalent to Q? As long as only one of them is true. Yeah, it's, it's, if they're diff it's, it's, it's if they're different. Right? Well, in, in another name for that is exclusive OR. So, are 0 and 0 different? No, so the result is 0. Are 0 and 1 different? Yes, so it's 1. 1 exclusive or 0 is also 1, but then 1 exclusive or 1 is 0. So you see, it's like or, but, it's ex but they can't both be true at the same time. So it's one or the other, but not both. 
Now, does everybody understand how that works in binary? The binary. Yeah? And the symbol for this in C++ is that caret. All right? Is everybody, are we good? Okay, now let's take a look at how these uh, shift operations work. So what I have here is an example of an 8-bit quantity. And let's suppose that it's uh, like it's, it's an integer and the variable is i. Okay, and its value is 00001110 in binary. And if you work that out, remember how we did the ones place, the twos place, the fours and the eights? So that's what? 2 plus 4 plus 8 is what? 14. Do you see that? Now here's how the shift operator works. If you, do, if you say I shift right by 1, what does it do? It moves everything, every bit over by 1. And the one that used to be at, and the rightmost just gets lost. And what comes in from the left? Zero. Zeros. Is everybody clear? That's how the shift one. And if you, if you start off with the same I and you do I shift right two times, two bits, then what does that do? It shifts over twice. Does everybody see? Are you with me? How it just shifts? And then, and then if, you, if you start with that original I again, and you do I shift, oh by the way, we're not doing this I followed by I shift right one followed by shift right two. We're always going back to the original one and shifting it on this table. You see what I mean? So if you have that original I and you shift left one, what gets shifted in from the left? Zeros. So it just gets shifted over like this. Now look, you guys, how this works arithmetically. Watch. If you have a number like this, 563, in decimal, and you shift left, what does it do? What do you get? 5630. So basically, what have you done to the number if you do a shift left in decimal? Multiply, by Multiply it by 10. But when we do a shift left, what, what, we started with 14. If we do a shift left in binary, what do we do? Multiply it by 2. And if we were to shift this left by 2, we would have 56300. Zero, zero. We'd be multiplying it by what? 10 squared. But here, what are we doing? We're multiplying it by what? 2 squared by 4. Does everybody see how, arithmetic, how you can do arithmetic with shift? How you can do multiplies and divisions by shifts? Very efficient. We're going to want to use this fact in the Bernstein hash. Does everybody see the, con the, the concept? Now, there's one more thing that we need to do before we can do this, before we can understand how this works. There is an operation in the Knuth hash that's called a rotate operation. And unfortunately, C++ does not have a rotate operator. So we're going to have to compute it. And so this next slide shows how to compute a rotation. Now watch this. It's really slick. I think you'll like it. Now watch this. Suppose we start with a number, a binary pattern that 11001110. Are you with me? And here's what rotate means. What rotate means is this. Let me just give another little visual here. What it means is this one goes to here, 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 this one, this one goes to here, and this one does what? This one goes to here. Are you with me? So instead of it being shifted out, it rotates. That's the, a rotation. That's, the, that's the, what a rotation is. So if we do a, an 8-bit rotation and we rotate this one bit to the left, what will the pattern be? Can you tell me what the pattern will be? So, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, because that one rotated. Now, does everybody see that? Are you with me? And if we rotate that left one more time, what happens? Z zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, because that one rotated around. Are you with me? And one more time. 
And this time the zero rotates around, right? Is everybody clear? So does everybody see then that this is a rotate left by three bits? Are, are you with me here? Okay, so that's a rotate left by three bits. So now here's the thing. We don't have a rotate, and furthermore, we want to rotate, well, we don't have a rotate operation in C++, but the Knuth algorithm for uh, the hash, hashing function calls for a rotation. So here's how we compute it using shifts. So now, we're going to start with 11001110. And the first thing we're going to do is what? What do you think? Shift left how many? One. Not just one. Three. We're going to do them all at once. Three. We're going to shift, now look, we're going to shift left three bits. Now do you see what that did? What got lost? <laughs> Yeah, the zero, the the zero one, the the one one zero got lot, got shifted out, right? But still, that's a shift left. And now, okay, so we're, now on the other side, what are we going to do? What do you suppose we're going to do now? We're not going to shift left three bits, but we're, what are we going to do? Shift right. Shift right but do you, can you tell me how many? Three. I don't think so. Five. Uh, ah, why five? Yeah. Now watch. Now here's the thing. We're going to shift right five bits. But now here's the thing, you guys. If, there, if, there, if the integer is bigger than just eight bits, whatever stuff that's out there is going to be shifted in. Do you see what I mean? Because we don't know how big the integer is. Could be eight bits, could be 16 bits, could be 32 bits, could be 64 bits. We're going to assume that it's at least 32 bits and we're going to program it so that even if it is 64 bits, it's going to work as a 32-bit quantity. Yeah? Why could you have bits of different sizes? Like, is there a certain amount of memory that's allocated? Okay, well, look, the size of an int is not, the number of bits and the size of an int is not determined, is not determined by the programming language. So, in some computers, and it could be 16 bits. In other computers, it could be 32. In others, it could be 64. In fact, that's one of the differences between a 32-bit computer and a 64-bit computer. And when you run a 64-bit version of an operating system, that's one of the things that could be different. Are you with me on that? So, but we're going to assume that there's at least 32 bits, because that's a pretty reasonable assumption, uh, in our code when we code up the Knuth algorithm. But let's just say that there, we don't know. You see what I'm saying? We don't know, but we want this to be an 8-bit rotate. So, we, so, so, those, so that, do you understand those X's means something could be shifted in from higher up in the number. Are you with me? Just like blah, like nothing. Like well, I mean garbage, garbage, garbage values. We don't know what they are. Right. Yeah, okay. But is it guaranteed that they will be zeros when you shift left? It is guaranteed that they will be zeros in the, on the, f coming in to the right when you do a shift left. That is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Right, but we, because we don't know how long the integer is, then we don't know what's going to be shifted in. Okay. We're going to do a right shift. This is all such good stuff. I mean, this is, I mean, all serious programmers know how to do, this is called bit twiddling. We're doing bit twiddling. Okay, so now, now what do you suppose we have to do? And I suppose, what, what do you suppose we want to do? We want to get rid of those what? Of those X's and make them what? We want to make them zeros. How can we make them zeros? Look. How can we make those things zeros? See, we have x, 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 one, one, zero. How can we make these all zero? How can we make these all zero and keep these unchanged? How can we make these all zeros and keep these unchanged? No, 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 no. There's how to, but what and what and what is always zero? Zero. What and what is always zero? Zero. Yeah, so look. Let's do an and. And we do zero, 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 zero. But now, what and what is always this? What's the identity for, for conjunction? It's one. So what? One, one, one. Are you with me? And if we do this, what will this be? Zero, 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 one, one, zero. So this will come down unchanged and these will be all zeros. This is called a mask. So is that the like, identity 
No, no, no. I mean, what we're saying... We return the same thing, regardless of what your original... If you and any quantity with one, you get the same thing. And so because we have ones here, this is going to come down unchanged. Are you with me? This is called a mask. Is it, are, are you with me on that? Okay. And furthermore, these will all be zeroed out. Are you with me? Yeah, question? Is it the one, one, one that's mask, or is the entire... No, no. Uh, yeah, this, this, whole thing is a, this whole thing is called a mask. We are masking out... What we are doing is we are masking out the first five bits. That's, how you, that's what you say. Mask out the first five bits. Mask out all but the last three bits. Right? But now, what number is this? Eight. Eight. What is it in hex? Seven. Yeah, actually, it's zero, seven. Are you with me? So look, look. Bitwise and with what? Zero x, zero, seven. And what do we get? This. The zero x is a... Uh uh, uh, yeah, in C++, this okay. is how you in C++, this is how you indicate a binary a binary value in hex. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. So that. Right. And now, what? And now, what do we do with? And now, what do we do with this that we did over here? And this, what do we do with them? Bitwise what? Exclusive. Not exclusive or. And not, not and. Or. or. <laughs> Last time's a charm. <laughs> bitwise or. Right? So if you bitwise or, what do you get? Because, see, these are all zeros. What is zero or anything? That thing. So you get the left part, and then you get the right part. So you bitwise or those, and what do you get? Boom! There's our rotation computation with shifts. Does everybody clear? See, here, let's write out, write out the or. So look, what we're doing is, Z, from here, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and this one is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. And this, we're doing or. And so here, what's the, what's the or? Well, the, all these zeros means this is going to come down unchanged. Are you with me? See, look. All... Look. All these zeros mean that this is going to come down unchanged. And furthermore, what? All these zeros mean what? This is going to come down unchanged. There. Are you with me? So this is 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And then this is 1, 1, 0. Does everybody see how that works? Little formal methods here, identities of... Is false the identity of or? Yes, false is the identity of or. Oh, good point. That's, that's what we're using. False is the identity of or. Okay, now, with all that in mind, here's the Knuth hash function. Unsigned int Knuth hash x. String gets a key string from x, so we already have that code for you. And what does it do? Initializes result. And result, what is going to be the type of result? What is going to be the type of result? Unsigned int. Because that's what we're going to return. Are you with me? Initialize result. For each character of string, str. Now, str is a C++ string. You can subscript it. You can say str sub i. And furthermore, if you go look, at the, look up the C++ documentation for a string, S-T-R-I-N-G, there is a way to get the size of it, how many characters are in there. Okay, so go look that up. Figure out how to do the loop. Are you with me? Okay, so that's your loop for each character. And rotate the result left by five bits. How are you going to rotate the result left by five bits? Well, you're going to, well, no, don't use another. Don't use a separate function. Now, you can do all of this in line. You're going to shift left three, shift right. 
well, we're going to assume that it's 32 bits. I'll show. I'll give you an example in a minute. But anyway, what it does is it rotate. Assume 32 bits. We're going to rotate left by five bits. So you're going to have to do a shift, and you know the way we just did it before. And then we're going to exclusive or the result with the character. Now, exclusive or which operation was that? Carrot. Right. Okay. So here's an example, just to show you how this how this works. Here's an example, a Knuth hash function example. The key string is hat, H-A-T. And we're going to assume 32-bit binary values. So hat has three characters, H-A-T, three characters. Question? Oh, yeah. um, the reason why these are returning a signed bit, I mean, um, an unsigned integer is because that we don't put a signed bit in, right? Yes, there's no signed bits here, right. But the, but the reason we're, we are returning an unsigned int is because it's being used as a, as a subscript in an array. Are you with me? So, it's, and arrays can't be, you can't have a negative, you can't have strings, I mean you can't have um, a ne yeah, negative index. Is that what assigned is? Yeah, signed integers means that it can be negative, yeah. yeah. An int is, is, assigned, is assigned to type, yeah, so we make it unsigned. Okay, so the length of string hat is three decimal, which is one one binary. And if you look up the ASCII value of H, that's one one zero one zero 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 binary. If you you know that table that we showed, okay. So there's the H, there's the A, and then the ninety seven I think was on the table. A and then value of T is this. All right. Now watch how this works. Here's a little run through. So now how what is the return value initialized to? Zero, 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 and at the end what? One, one. Now why is that one, one? Because one, one in binary is what? Uh, binary one, one is what in decimal? Three. Three, and how many letters are there in hat? Three. Three. Now, are we good? So that's where that is, came from. So initialize that. And then we rotate left five bits. Now do you see if we rotate left five bits, that those five bits over there are gonna come over here, and then these are gonna, is, are you with me on that? The pattern there? Okay, and now what's the binary value of H? If you look up the binary value of H, we said it was the bits are one zero zero one one zero one zero zero. Oh, you know, I only have seven bits showing here, but put stick an extra zero on the front. Are you with me? So the binary uh, the binary value of H that's this binary. Now we XOR this with the with with the return value the Okay, so do you see the XOR? Now, see, are, they, are these the same or different? Same. same, zero. Same, zero. Same, zero. Different, what? One. One. Same, zero. Now, do you see how that was? Okay. And now you just do it again. So, here, so here's the return value from the previous slide. What do we do? Rotate left. Now, if we really rotate left five bits, what happens? Do you see how that one got rotated left and those got flipped around here? And now the binary value of A is blah, 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 blah. And here, same or different? Different, one. Same, zero, same, zero, same, zero, same, zero. What about here? Different, one, different, one. Different, one. Are we good? And then same thing here. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And of course, here's this, so that's that's and so do you see that if you once you have a long string, these things are going to get in here and XOR and they're going to get all mixed up and all that kind of stuff. And then the very last thing that you do before you apply the subscript is what mod it with the what. The very last thing that not it's not inside the function, but that's that's when you go to actually use the hash value to look in your hash table. What's the last thing you have to do before you subscript it? Mod it with the what? Capacity. capacity of the hash table. So modding the capacity of the hash table, that computation is not inside the function. Are you with me? Because the function doesn't know anything about the size of the table. You see, the function just computes a hash function. And you can use it for any size of table that you want. So the, mod, the last thing that you have to do when you actually put it in the subscript is you have to mod it with the capacity of the table. That's not in the function itself. Is everybody clear on that? Are we good? 
And so here, the problem is there is no C++ rotate operator. Well, the solution is to do what? Rotate five bits to the left. Sorry, there is no ro So the solution to rotate five bits to the left is to do what? Shift five bits to the left. This time what? Shift 27 bits to the right. Are you with me? And then do what? Bitwise it with what? 0x, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1f. What's 1f? Why is that 1f? Look, that, that's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, How many zeros? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now what is this 1? This is a hex number. What is, how many, what is, what's the bit pattern for 1? What's the bit pattern for 1? Yes. 0, 0, 0, 1. And what's the bit pattern for an F? 1, 1, 1, 1. And so you see how many ones do we have here? All together, how many ones do we have? Five ones. That's the mask. Are you with me? That's the mask. And the bitwise or, and I, you don't, don't make separate variables for these. You can just do all of this stuff all in one big, long, complicated. You can do result gets, Result shifted left and and or exclusive or whatever you know. So here's just this next slide just shows you how how you you see the zeros are coming in here. You see now the x's are coming in here, and then here's the mask and boom and boom. Same thing that we did only 32 bits instead of like eight. Are you with me? Is everybody clear on how that works? And now the Bernstein hash is really easy compared to the Knuth. So it's unsigned in, Bernstein hash, x, string, key value from x. Now, I swear, where this number 5,381 came from, I tried to find out the significance of that number. I think it's prime, but I'm not, I, I believe it is. I tried to find out where, what the significance of that number was, and it's... I never was able to find out. But anyway, it's a prime number, I think. Can somebody check and see if that's prime? S say, is 5381 prime? Google is amazing. Yes, it is a prime number. It is a prime number. Okay, so it's a prime number. All right. And what, what do you, so you initialize the result to 5,380, and then for each character of the string, you multiply the result by 33, and then you just add the character. But now there's one little trick. There is a very efficient way to multiply 33, to multiply by 33. To multiply by 33, what you should do is what? Shift left. Shift left 5, which multiplies it by what? 32, and then do what? Add the original number. You can do that in just one line. Because it's much more efficient to do it this way than to send it through the multiplier. Actually, a good compiler will do this for you depending on a, if you're a RISC or a CISC machine. Anyway, <laughs> there's lots of little stuff that, anyway, yeah, question? Did you have a Sh question? Yeah, yeah, no, I do have a question. Uh, shift doesn't change the original value that you put in. Like well, it depends. Shift five, it doesn't, like on int x, it doesn't change what x is. Or does it reassign x? No, 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 it doesn't. It's like, it, look, if you, if, you, if you say x gets x times 3 plus 2 plus 2 times x. That's how you change it. I mean, th th this x is the current value of x. This x is the current value of x. This doesn't change the value of x for this one. Or uh, You see what I'm saying? I mean, you use x... It's only plus plus. Right. It's not. Yeah, yeah. It returns a, it returns a value, but it doesn't change. Right. Is everybody clear? And that's it.
we're just at the end, right, right in time for the end. So, if you want to go on Piazza tonight, I mean, that's open. Oh, but wait, don't you guys have, I gave you an extension. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yo, we don't, ah, oh, man, you don't have to do this till tomorrow. So anyway, we'll be available on Piazza for questions. Good deal. See you on Thursday.